in the old days, we thought about a trusted model. The code effectively assumed I'm defended. I don't need to defend myself. Now with the internet and the threat vectors that are out there, every element of the, of the chain of applications from users to devices to applications have to defend itself. Shifting left simply means you don't do this as an afterthought, like we used to do it in the old days, quote unquote. We're doing it part of the design. Every piece of code assumes breach. Hey, so welcome back to Armchair Architects as part of the Azure Essential Show. This time we're going to dive into software development lifecycle stuff. So let's get the architects up here and let's get talking. So in our last episode, we started to say like, hey, we have to pay attention to the software development lifecycle. Specifically, we were chatting about like, uh, you know, shift left and stuff like that. So let's just get the shift left thing out of the way because I think people, some people know it, most people probably know it, but let's just let's just lay that out first. When we say shift left, we don't mean like like this, or I don't know which way is left for you, right? You Con presumably conceptually, like, what do you mean when you're saying shift left? Con conceptually, the it, maybe the best way to put this is when I was a young engineer 25 years ago, uh, security was the last thing that we thought about. It was a it was a uh, a finish line that we had to cross. It was a check on the things to do as a developer, uh, and we saw what that wrought in the industry. We saw a applications that were defenseless essentially. Uh, and so um, rather than late stage security defects that are oftentimes costly and time consuming to fix, or you slow down development cycles because you realize that you have to last minute patch a hole or get rid of some hard coded credentials, shifting left means that we can embed security at every stage of development. Essentially, I think we, we just chatted about this. Um, it's, it's looking at everything from the requirements to product discovery, to architecture and design, to secure implementation, to monitoring after it goes into production. Um, it's all of that, but shifting left means that you don't wait to the end to think about security. You try to put bake that in as non-functional requirements in the beginning. So the, the way we talk about and the public talks about is what's called secure by design. Uh, where you design security in from the very beginning, uh, as Eric said, from requirements all the way to the code itself uh, and the architecture you choose and so forth. And that is something that Microsoft, uh, based upon the issues that Eric talked about with uh, things in Windows 2000, with Blaster and other uh, fun things that were the start of how the internet changed the security posture for everyone. Uh, because in the old days, we thought about a trusted model. And the code effectively assumed I'm defended. I don't need to defend myself. Now, uh, with the internet and the threat vectors that are out there, every element of the, of the chain of applications from users to devices to applications have to defend itself. Shifting left simply means you don't do this as an afterthought, like we used to do it in the old days, quote unquote. We're doing it part of the design. Every piece of code assumes breach it assumes that somebody's going to hack and therefore you need to think through how do you protect yourself as a piece of code which is part of a larger piece of code it's part of an application it's part of an infrastructure so every element of the solution understands or thinks about security as part of its design process Okay, and just to, just for the just for like the two people, this is like you know when they when they show you a suit, uh, how to use your seatbelt on an airplane every time you get on an airplane. Just for the two people that don't know what we're talking about, when we say left, we have all of us in our head this this number line that starts. This is my left. I don't know if this is your left. Is it your left? I can't tell what you see. Pick, pick your left, whatever your left is. This is my left hand. Anyway, you start on one side, one side, which is the beginning where you're starting to build the stuff. And then the process goes in, in a chronological order. You know, you do a thing, you do a thing, you do a thing, you thing. And it's just saying, do it earlier in that chain, in that chain of events. That's what we mean by left, yes. you know, like, <clears throat> um, but obviously on video left can mean lots of things. So, you know, but you, so, you understand. Yeah, um, so think about it this way, very practical. So uh -huh. you as a developer, uh, design a piece of code. First of all, you get trained on what is secure by design practices, what is proven practices for the scenario you're looking at, because uh, security for a uh, client application that runs on a mobile app is different than something right. that's in a data center and stuff like that. So you have to think through what's going on. Um, web applications are specifically um, targetable because they are exposed. 
right. cross-site scripting and all sorts of other attack vectors uh, that have been exploited very successfully because code was not secure and didn't think about it. So you get taught, then you write the piece of code <clears throat> and obviously you're supposed to use the right frameworks, the right patterns and so forth. And there is lots of guidance in various languages from Python to C Sharp to Java of how to do that, HTML and so forth. And then during the check-in process, and that's another part of the shift left model, the check-in process will effectively look at your code. And before AI-driven code support, it would have rejected your code by saying, this code is not secure using static analysis and other techniques, um, but it wouldn't tell you how to fix it. And let's be also very clear, part of the problem that was always inherent in the secure by design, secure software development lifecycle is that assumed that developers knew what they were do doing with respect to security. There right. are some subtle things where if you do it a little bit wrong, it opens up security issue. And those are very, very hard to, to uh, understand as a normal developer if you're not a security expert. Right. So now with uh, the static compilers would flag it, but they wouldn't tell you how to fix it. So if you didn't have a security expert at hand, it's really hard to fix it. With the new models like GitHub Copilot and other AI assistants, they actually will flag it. They will actually propose the fix and offer to you, okay, you want me to put the fix into your code base? Um, and obviously you have to agree as a developer, but I think that's the ultimate fix is really having the system help you uh, with this complicated patterns and this ever evolving landscape. And obviously the AI models keep up with this stuff and help you with this kind of thing. So as a developer, you don't have to be lazy. You still have to do the right thing, um, but the system can help you write the right code and they can validate as part of your check-in process or pull requests if you're using those methods uh, to effectively go and make sure that the code you do check in is as secure as humanly possible. And, and just for people who, who, who don't want to just think about this super abstractly, like examples we can talk about are things like, how are you serializing and deserializing your data as it comes in? Like, are you know, do you properly sanitize your input so that you're do you know so that you're not trusting it? You know, what do you trust about that? So all the ways that we now know are great ways to cause somebody who's not doing these things to fall open in, in unpleasant ways. But those are the sort of, you know, these are just concrete examples. Like you were talking about web stuff. There's also concrete examples, like whatever you're writing, like, you know, yep. you know, what am I trusting? What am I not trusting to go back to our previous stuff? Eric, it looks like you had something else to say, help to say this in the, in the left. I, in left I did normally, normally in these sessions, I fly off the handle and go way too deep and way too fast. And Noli does a good job of pulling us back. But this time he created a nice on-ramp for us to talk about uh, static, dynamic, and interactive application security testing. Um, okay. So what Uli was talking about prior was static application security testing, or SAST. Uh, and that's a scenario in which, as he described, you take a system of intelligence, a SAST uh, framework, and you point it to a code base. And its job is to identify, using a white box testing method, um, any types of configuration files, dependencies, hard-coded passwords, secrets, insecure coding patterns and input validation issues, all that kind of stuff. And right. it's supposed to let you know about it. And as we said, in this day and age, remediate it, you know, and, and it'll tell you what you need to do. Dynamic application security testing, which uh, is a black box method, basically says, um, I need a running application and now I'm going to actually poke at it. So I'm going to send it malicious payloads. I'm going to automate, you know, well-known attacks and penetration methods. Yeah, I'm going to black hat it and I'm going to figure out you know, how many injection vulnerabilities you actually have from SQL to cross-site scripting and all that kind of stuff, any type of security misconfigurations. And I'm going to tell you about those. And then SAST and DAST combined is interactive. So it instruments the app uh, utilizing agents uh, inside the runtime environment like Java, .NET, or Node, and it monitors function calls, and it looks at the source code associated with those function calls because it knows about both. And then it detects security issues in real time as the app's being used by utilizing both the source code and the behavior uh, of its agents as looking at the running app. So I think that uh, we couldn't get away without trying to kind of categorize those three things. And in a shift left model, you have to introduce those at the right times of the entire life cycle. 
And that includes after you go to production. So there's CI CD considerations associated with this. So right. as the app's being deployed, you want to run your SAS to DAST and your um, IS, can we say that? That IS component, uh, all to continually get this confidence that the app is being looked after. Yeah, so there are two points I would add. So first of all, um, David, you might remember uh, our colleague, um, uh, Michael Howard, wrote the Bible. Pausing right here because we're about to head into a really important topic, which is secret management, how you take that into account when you're doing development. So I hope you'll join us on part two of this conversation as part of Armchair Architects in the Azure Essentials show.